in this video, you're going to see how I am able to use this Goldbeam Studio VII series projector scanner thingy to record my 8mm film using a projector and my DSLR. Mind you, you could just use your DSLR and a projector in a dark room against a wall, but in this case, I wanted to see if this would work. With that being said, I'm going to unbox this and we're going to attempt to see if we can get it to work and see if there are any problematic problems with it. Now, mind you, the problems are very minor, but mind you, it depends on the DSLR, the lens you're using, the light, how much light is surrounding everything else. So without further ado, let's unbox this thing. So here's the unboxing of the Goldbeam Studio VII series. This is a film to transfer, this is a machine to transfer film onto digital format. We're going to open the box up and see what I got. Mind you, I bought this used, so there is not much to it. And it's made in the USA. The box shows a bunch of accessories that are not there. All right. Now that the expense is hyped up a little bit, I'm going to unbox this thing. Little side notch here, not tape down. We're going to just pop it open, push it out like so, pop the sides open, and pull the unit straight out of the box. Wrapped in styrofoam, I'm going to use this nice nifty little carrying handle, flip this side off. Turn it around, flip that side off, and here's our unit. Right here, you put the projector on it. Uh, back here, I assume you put uh, the pictures so you can take a look. There we go, there's a light. On the front, we connect the DSLR. And then on this side, there's a bunch of aux connections that I don't understand how this actually works. So all this stuff, I don't understand, just to show you. But then we've got places and I'll show you how I set this up. We've got this Kodak 8mm movie camera that looks like the box got destroyed by termites or something but who knows just glad it's out of wherever it came from. It looks like there's supposed to be a handle here but I never understood how they made that work. Just open it up we got the 8mm brownie projector which I'll show in a later video how to load and operate and use. And to pop open using these two little notches on the top and this is a Brownie 300 movie projector. Slide it down and we got the cord and it looks like an extra reel. This is eight millimeter projector. The items you're gonna need is a camera to record the imagery that you pick up. Something preferably with a aperture adjustment. So in this case, I'm using the Canon EOS T3i with a movable screen. You need a projector, eight millimeter Super 8 projector. Anything would work that you're recording from. You need the unit itself, and then you need the reel-to-reel -reel that you're going to be exposing. Mind you, this is gonna be one large setup, so you're gonna need a lot of space. In this case, I decided to keep everything on this rug in order to make sure that I can maximize and utilize the space that I have here using the common components that are in front of me right now. I'm gonna start by deciding which way I wanna put the film transfer device. In this case, since the outlet is running this way behind me, I'm going to face the projector coming toward the film transfer device, allowing me to put the DSLR right here, right in front. One of the problems I just found is that my lens doesn't match the placement of where the film transfer machine is gonna be sitting. So I have to find something to elevate that with. A couple of 80s Moog CV joint video tapes should work. Set those straight down. And it's now level and parallel right here. Those are the switches. I have no idea how they work and I'm never going to use them. But I'm recording non-sound video so it doesn't matter. Coming to this side making sure that the lens is parallel to the viewing frame. This has a little collapsible lens itself. 
that allows me to see through it and we're going to hook the DSLR up to that. Found another problem with this. The DSLR is higher than the viewing window. Like, oh no. Moving the top adjusting plate to the DSLR mount, that actually helped it bring it to a level height with the viewing window. Using my laptop, now we're exactly parallel here. And we're going to align this to meet and mate this window here. And I now just moved everything. So you can tell this is a really finicky setup, but it's what I've got going at the moment. Turn it on. We're not looking at it and touching it. Oh, let me turn it on. There we go. And we want it to be exactly inside the box. Mind you that this is kind of bright, so I'm going to just align it. And now to get this set up, I've got this on for the moment. And see how we have lines here? We're going to have to do a one, a test roll or a test run. And this is just being adjusted like so, but we're going to just adjust this till the lines disappear. And we want to run it a couple of times. There we go. We want to run it a couple of times to see what the image looks like when we kind of start to record so we can get the best recording we can. All right, now that everything's set up, I had to change projectors because the other one was having an issue. So this one, pull that back out. So this one is an old Kodak projector as well, but this is my go-to at the moment. It's got a better lens, so we're going to videotape and you'll see the clip in just a moment. So I'm going to, because I need you to see as well, I left the television on. But you want to do this in complete darkness as this can pick up anything being picked up in your light sensor on your camera. Now we're going to flick the screen onto the camera. There we go. We've got screen edge. I'm going to turn this on by turning the knob on. Okay, we've got movement. It's connected. I can see it through the screen. And I'm going to hit record. Okay, I stopped the clip. You can still see it's going. I'm going to turn the light off. Turn the speed of the film down. Just because I don't want it to keep winding on that little reel. Because look at how much there is and look how little there is. And I hope you enjoyed. Now mind you, the quality isn't all the best. But, I mean, we got imagery. Alright, I'm going to turn the lights on and uh, kind of just show this. And there it is, right there. And that's how I convert from film to machine to movie to internet. Wacha! Actually, I now have a person who does it for me, so I don't have to do this anymore. After all that, I still don't know what these on the side do and what they relate to doing at all. I mean, I have no clue. Now, would I say it's worth my trouble to try and use this machine? I'd say... No, I do not like this machine whatsoever. I mean, it is horrendous. Mind you, we can do something else with it. And unfortunately, I just decided to put it up online. And I can't use it for my purposes. And hopefully, this helps show how to use this machine, not only to other people, but other people who have this machine. And if you have a better experience with one of these, I mean, they made so many different versions of this. If you have a better experience with one of these, do tell me what I was doing wrong. Sadly, I won't have it at that point. 
and hopefully somebody else can redo something with this. But, I mean, I tried my hardest to figure this out, and it was just so problematic for me. So, would I recommend it? Yes. Would I recommend it to a professional? No. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video on how to use the Goldbeam Studio VII projector scanner thing. I mean, it, it, it was just all over the place. And as normal, don't forget, hit that like button. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and let me know if you want to see more. So, I appreciate it. You have a good one. Stay safe.